Hello, um, I just got out of the shower and I'm looking a little bit ratchet right now, but I am about to do a plant trade with somebody from a local Facebook group. Um, right now I am packaging up in order. You guys know I work at a garden center and my garden center has the most beautiful large uh, philodendron giganteum. And I always wanted one like that. So um, I have a spot, I'm thinking, this grow tent is kind of in the corner and I'm thinking of pushing it this way, kind of beside my desk and then putting a big statement plant right there, kind of beside the window. Um, I think that might look really nice. There's just not really any bigger plants in here and I really would love that. Um, so I've always admired this big like elephant ear type plants and so I posted this morning in a local Facebook group Facebook group and I was so surprised at the amount of people locally in a group because I actually I created one myself but I didn't know there was one already um, and it's a plant swap group so they don't do any sales or anything so it's only trading um, there's 500 members in my community in Brantford so that's just absolutely um, crazy to me that there's so many uh, plant people out there. So that's really exciting. And I posted and within five minutes, I had two people respond to me. And the one girl said she bought it from my work, actually hers. Um, and she offered to give me a six leaf cutting. And I was like, cause I really would like, I'm, as you guys know, I'm in university and I'll probably be moving out soon. Um, it's my last year of school. So um, coming up on my last year anyway. So I would like to start growing some nice big plants for when I move out to create some nice big statement pieces in the house I hopefully move into. So um, without further ado, I'm just gonna kind of show you the plants that I'm gonna trade her. Um, I have a little box starting to be put together here. I have a Monstera Dubia in there and a variegated Brawl Marks. I'm excited to be trading and I also, <laughs> I got this Mame yesterday, but in the cup I have a little Cebu Blue in there for her um, that I'm gonna add to her trade. So um, I'm going to finish packing up this plant and then I'm going to go over there and do the trade and then we're going to pot them up because this mame I got in another trade yesterday actually needs to be pot up as well. So we're going to do both of those things. So stay tuned for that. Hello everybody. I am back from doing the trade. Um, I hope this is enough that you guys are going to be able to see what I'm doing here, but this is the philodendron giganteum that I picked up and this is it like next to my head. So it's a pretty good size. So um, right now I have a candle going because I am going to seal this. She actually just cut this um, like I'd say an hour ago, maybe. I just got home from, um, from going there. So I'm going to put that one in LECA. So I have all my LECA washed out in my um, self-watering pot that I'm going to use for it. I think that's going to be, um, I don't know, I just wanted to use that for that one um and then the mame is right here and i think i decided i'm going to go with some soil oh, i also have this pot here which currently has a philodendron gloriosum in it it was a two leaf cutting but unfortunately it suffered some cold damage on the way and i am going to disturb it and i'm going to move it into a smaller pot just because it doesn't really need to be taking up such a such um prime real estate you could say and this since this is a crawling philodendron I think this pot would just be perfect for this mame right now so that is what I'm going to do and I just have to wait for the candle to burn evenly because I really it's a pet peeve to let uh, candles just burn holes down I just worked at a candle shop and I don't like it Alrighty, so I am back with my liquid mix here and it is a mix of I think it's fur bark Parlay and maybe sphagnum moss. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna open this. And I also got some gold wire that I used to make my trellises. And I'm gonna use that to make some little U-shaped anchors to just help anchor these plants into the pot a little bit better because these uh, crawling ones are gonna need it. Oh my gosh, this is not what I was expecting. Like full on. Selected Western fir bark for orchids and other epiphytes. Western fir bark, charcoal, and perlite. I don't see any of that. It literally looks like plain. Maybe I have to shake it. Oh, it's in there. There's some perlite. Oh, I see. Okay. There's some bits of charcoal there. Okay. It's all good. I think that's. Um, for some reason, I was expecting like thicker, chunky bark, but I actually kind of like this better because 
chunky bark I think holds too much moisture and I think this allows it to be chunky but also like airy instead of just chunky and holding moisture kind of like cocoa bar does. So I think this is a pretty good mixture. I have, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, pouring it on the Gloriosum is what I'm doing. Um, anyway, it's a good mix. I'm just pouring it everywhere, so don't mind me. This thing isn't gonna be rooted. It didn't come rooted at all. So yeah, came out like nothing. Um, it did have, so here's the, it, it has one growth point, it has two growth points actually, and this was the stem of the one leaf. The other one I actually had to cut off. It did have, sorry, it did have roots. It just had severe root rot and they all died. Um, thankfully that was not me doing, oh my gosh, a baby root. Oh, you're kidding. Look at that. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm excited. I got this in February. And instead of that stake, I am going to make one of those little anchors. So what I do is I just kind of think how long I want it. So if I want the anchor like that long, I just double that and then cut it. This stuff is great. It's craft wire, so it's not like super thick. And then I literally just take it and bend it like that about the width of the like petiole or stem that I'm trying to anchor. So this one's smaller. The other ones are going to be bigger. And I'm just gonna kind of hold, I'm gonna try to hold it up. You hold the plant up, right? And you put your thing over it and then just push it down. And it'll just hold your plant in place. It's just great for these um, crawling philodendrons. I'm gonna be super duper lazy and just kind of like water it with the mame water because the moss needed watering. It was really dry. I have this nice pot, which is wider than it is tall, which is perfect because we have a crawling philodendron here. Um, and it has these, it has one drainage hole at the bottom and then some on the sides here. I got this for my work. I absolutely love it. It's an orchid pot. I have my mixture here with all the bark and everything, and I'm just going to fill it up um, the majority of the way just because, again, it's a crawling one and it has no roots right now. Okay, so I'm shaking it down and it's pretty at the top. And literally, I'm just going to kind of like inspect this guy. Um, he looks good. I actually kind of want to seal him too. So we have some aerial roots going on there. We have a new growth point here. These two leaves, this one here and this one. This is the newest one here. Um, and then we have this like stem here. And there's another growth point right there. That's a axillary bud i got so mixed up because i heard people say auxiliary and axillary but it's on the axle of the stem so it's axillary i'm gonna blow them out because it's in three circles and i'm gonna dip them in and then relight them and hopefully that won't the candle because i really don't like when candles burn like directly down, like three holes down Okay, so I'm gonna get my plants ready. Just gonna quickly dip this in the one there. I also don't wanna burn the plant too, right? Cause it's uh, really hot. So I wanna try to, there we go. And they're both sealed. It's a beautiful candle. I love the smell. I'm gonna keep it going. Um, because it's nice and it makes my room smell nice and I like that. And the wax just kind of protects it from any bacteria or anything. It's just good to do on a freshly cut plant. So I'm going to make three anchors for this guy here. That'll just anchor different parts of the plant and I'm totally cool with that. So this is hardened off. I'm happy with that. It's got some aerial roots on it so it should be good so I'm literally I don't know if I want to I think I'm gonna stick it in um the stolen doesn't like to be under the soil but I think this was still part of the part that grew into the soil so I am gonna put that part under and I'm gonna do it right towards the edge because if you guys know how philodendron like crawling philodendron grow they're gonna grow this way so they're gonna want the most room possible and then I have these little anchors here they're gonna help me until it roots. There we go, we got that one. We have that one in there. And I think if I just put one more like cross, maybe over here. And it feels pretty secure. I'm just gonna be careful with it. 
Now I'll do one more. Okay, I'm just gonna turn it and crisscross it and then I'll show you guys what I mean by crisscross and all that because you can't even see. And then we have our kind of our new growth point here and then there is our stem and that's what I meant by crisscross is they're kind of crisscrossed. <laughs> water with this. Um, I do have a watering can after, so I'll give it like an actual water. But the fact that the soil is dry is also going to affect the stability of the plant. Anyway, the wet soil keeps it anchored way better and she's not toppling. So, so we have our inside of our self watering pot and inside it I put this lecker. I'm going to put it in halfway. And then this gorgeous plant. I'm just gonna set it in like that. Oh, I'm gonna trim some of these roots are kind of like dead on the ends. Oh, I feel bad because this is just so close to this node, like this leaf might, it might die, but hopefully it lasts because it's really loud. But it seems to be anchoring in really well, so. I'm happy with that. Um. So one of the things about the pond was I thought it would be better to anchor plants. This plant specifically anchored really well. I don't even know if I can tip it, like just barely. Um, it anchored really well because it had so many branches and the lack is like in between and it's, you know, able to, it even has these little aerial roots which are able to keep down. But a plant such as the mame, which was just cut and doesn't have any roots, is going to be really difficult to do that with. So for my um, Rufidophora tetrasperma, I'm going to be taking it out of its pot. Oh, and we still have to fill this with its nutrients. And I put some... Sorry, I talk about like eight different things at once and it's hard for even me to follow. So sorry if that's hard for you to follow. Um, but I am gonna fill this with nutrients. I'll show you. And I'm, I also put Marfil in there. That's why it's darker than normal. Marfil is a fish emulsion based fertilizer. You can get it on Amazon. It's really good. The one I had lasted me about a year. However, I wasn't using it as strong as it needed to be used at all. And I just realized that you can or I just kind of found out that you can put them in with um, like hydroponic plants as well. So that's what I'm going to do. So while we, while we fill, and I almost said while we spill. So I'm just gonna wait, I don't know if you can see this gauge. Now you can see it. I'm just gonna fill until it says that it's full. Um, so basically the Rifidophora tetrasperma, it, I put it in pawn, but it's such a big container and it turns out the materials to make pawn are really expensive. So I kind of decided that I want to put LECA in the bottom and then pawn on top. And so I'll see how that goes. And if not, I might just put that one in LECA and use pawn for like smaller plants. Like the Pink Princess did pawn perfectly. Um, and it would have done LECA perfectly too. There's nothing wrong with LECA. Um, I feel like just some of like the crawling plants might not be anchored as well with it. And I would have been able to use those like anchors that I made out of the um, wire, like no problem with pawn. However, LECA might be a little bit difficult, but again, it's just to the size. And honestly, I think pawn is good for Hoyas and things like that because they have such fine roots. But for philodendron with, oops, much uh, larger roots, I think the, uh, the LECA is just fine and it's also cheaper um, and it's also sustainable so upon each piece was like $20 probably well 20 okay so it was about $50 for all of it my boyfriend bought some of it but if I were to buy it again it'd be about $50 and I haven't really gauged how many plants it would plant yet but I'm assuming it wouldn't be amazing I'm so tired when is this gonna be full I feel like, like is this working right Oh my gosh, it wasn't pushed in all the way. You're freaking kidding me. I might have poured way too much. Are you joking? I sat there pouring. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's nearly to the brim, guys. Oh. I was wondering why it was taking so long. So it says... Water's at medium. Look at that, now it's working.
so I always keep it like super up to the top super up to the top there's a little straw in there so there's a piece of foam that goes on the bottom and it basically floats on the water and just kind of moves this straw up and down based on the water level in the bottom reservoir um so anyway that's how it tells you how full it is and when I just plant something in there I always keep it more full just because if it's not rooted or anything having more water is just going to help it do like a kind of it conducts water up so the water's in the bottom so you only need one third of water but this has about half water now probably and that's only because the plant isn't rooted and I just wanted to give it a little bit extra water to get going I want to say I haven't even like expressed like how amazing this is I'm like super getting into just like common plants or like plants that are just I don't know like I just I saw the one we had at work and I absolutely loved it and I think at first I kind of got turned off of it because it looked like an alocasia and I never actually took the time to sit and look at what it was it was literally I've worked there for a month and I literally just like last week looked at it and said, that's a gorgeous gigantium. So I'm really happy to get one that's like this size because this is just like perfect. I'm literally obsessed with this leaf. How can you not love it? And like, I just love that leaf. Like it's just the cutest thing. This pot of that I kept the pond in. I, uh, try to fix it so this is looking really droopy that's to be expected the plant has been pretty much deprived of a lot of water um, because I cut and sealed its um, supply from the water so it actually has to start growing roots in order to receive water I'm just gonna pull this up and it was immediately chopped from my plant and sealed and put in here so I'm just gonna pour all of all of the pond back. We want this guy, the stake, to be right in the middle. So I'm gonna start pouring in. Like the leka just looks so pretty. I love the white and like the white pot. I'm like, there's only a little bit left anyway. Okay, I'm gonna use the rest of the Lekka and then if I need more, I'll use Pond on top. There's nothing wrong with Pond. Like, it's a great substrate. I just think for Philodendron, it might not be so necessary just because of like the price of it. But if you're getting a choose a pot and it's coming with the Pond, then like obviously don't just like use Lekka. Like it comes with it, which is why the pots are like kind of pricey. I saved myself a lot of pond, perfect, and it's way lighter, like way lighter. Um, so it's gonna save me money, space, and my Hoyas and stuff, I'm definitely gonna grow probably the pond like directly in like a mason jar. I saw Plant Me Ashley putting her Hoyas directly in mason jars, and you can kind of do that because you can see how much water you're doing, like even just with soil. But I'm thinking of doing it with some some pond. Let's pop this guy in and make sure his meter works. Can you see the meter? Did you see the straw go up? There we go. Okay, so hopefully, oops. So hopefully this guy is going to perk up. I have had a lot of issues trying to propagate um, the tetraspermas. I've propagated this guy successfully now once with my boyfriend. I put it in water for him for a month and then into soil and now it's doing like okay it's lost a couple leaves like this is to be expected it's the newest leaf but I wanted to keep it on because it was so darn cute but if I end up losing it I'm okay with that um this one I really can't cut off it has that middle fenestration that I absolutely love so I'm not cutting that off unless it goes brown this guy is going to be a little bit easier because he has some aerial roots and I'm just gonna have to find a gorgeous place for him I think I was going to move my green husband put it on the floor, but I was expecting to be getting a bigger one. I didn't really know how big it was going to be, and like this leaf is gorgeous for sure, um, but these leaves are a little bit smaller, and I think like I can't just set it on the floor. It's only like this tall. Um, so I can't set it on the floor. I could put it on like a table, like a bench, where I have that forgetty eye, or my desk.
there's the corner or there's my desk. Why would you leave a space in the corner? I really like that. I really like it there. But like at this point, like I had it there, like why did I turn the tent? Watch me just move it exactly where it was. My Ikea greenhouse there, and then I have a Hoya um, Carnosa Compacta. This is a Pylea Peppermoides that I got for Easter, and this, and these actually all need watering. And then there is my Cronhiana Silver. Okay, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move these, and then put the thing there, and then I'll see what I think. Is this little setup right here. Um, so I have my compacta there and my anthurium dome here. And it has a curtain, so don't you worry, she's not gonna burn. And then I have my sport monster right here, and then the Mindorensis and the little Cronhiana silver. That's all I'm gonna show you because this is already 35 minutes long, and then I have to also figure out where the other plants are going, but that's not why you watched the video. Yeah, thanks for watching. That's kind of it. I hope you learned something about pawn. Maybe you want to try it, maybe you don't. Um, if you do for a big plant, I would recommend using Lekka in the bottom just because it's very expensive and heavy, very freaking heavy. I'm telling you, the rocks, it's rocks, it's a bag of rocks. So Lekka is lightweight expanded clay aggregate. So it's a little bit lighter. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please follow me at My Glorious Leaves. Subscribe if you enjoy my content so far. I have a lot of videos planned and coming out um, it's not very consistent, but I'm consistently filming them. Um, it's just consistently having issues with the Wi-Fi and uploading them. So thank you guys so much. I hope you had a great day. I did. I love getting plants. It makes my day amazing. But anyway, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. So I messed around with it for literally like only two minutes later because I just am tired of um, messing around. But this is what I came up with. So I decided to put kind of some hoyas here, and then I moved the pink princess back, and I moved the aloe over there, and then I put the, the mame here. So hopefully it will get like a lot of light. Um, I usually put my humidifier over here, so hopefully it'll get a lot of humidity too. Peace.